Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about using the turning mechanism in LEGO EV3 Mindstorms. Without further ado, let's get started. So first things first, just make sure to open up a new project um, or a new program within your LEGO EV3 Mindstorms software. Um, and what we're going to start with, first I'd like to discuss the two different methods of turning. Um, as I mentioned before, in EV3 there are two methods of moving forward and backward and even turning as well. And these methods are move tank and move steering. So in move tank, um, you can individually control the left power and the right power. And then you can also select um, operation modes like off, on, on for seconds, on for degrees, and on for rotations. With that being said, you can also change the amount of rotations. If you change this to seconds, you can change the amount of seconds. Um, and that's about it. Whereas in the steering block, it's a bit different. So right here, we still have the on for seconds, on for degrees, on for rotations, all that. But instead of having two separate values, we have one for the steering, uh, essentially the way in which the or the, the direction that the robot is going to be turning in. Um, I think the best way to think about it is like a steering wheel. So if it's at zero, that means that your steering wheel is just completely pointed forward. Whereas if you were to change this value to 50, you would be taking a right turn and negative 50 would be a left turn, and you can see this in the icon right over here. This obviously is the power, but it's the power for both motors. Um, so you can only select the power for, for both motors in this move steering. And then obviously your rotations. So uh, let's start with move tank. So basically, um, the two directions that we want to turn in are right and left. We've already discussed how to go forward and background, uh, and backward. So we'll start off with a 90 degree turn. So a 90 degree turn is essentially a turn that creates a right angle. Um, and I'm sure all of you guys know what a right angle is. Um, so yeah, so just uh, turning at a, a 90 degree angle. So taking a, like a perfect right turn. Um, and the way we would do this is by setting one power to zero. And then setting the other power to whatever. This could be, it could be 0, 50, it could be 0, 100, 0, 25. And then make sure this is on run rotation. And if you guys try this program, you'll see that your robot will make a perfect right turn. Um, <clears throat> or just a perfect turn. In this case, it'll actually make a left turn, um, I believe, because basically what happens is the power left is set to 0 meaning that the left wheel stays in place, mm -hmm. whereas the right wheel moves forward. And this causes a movement in the robot in which the robot moves to the left, or it makes a left turn. Consequently, if you made this 50, and you made this 0, as you can see, the power left is 50, and the power right is 0. In this case, it would make a right turn. So go ahead and try that out on your robots and see what happens. And as I mentioned before, we want to keep this value on ro one rotation um, because it essentially ensures that we'll have just one right turn and nothing else. If you want to experiment, you can try making this or setting this to two or three rotations, and you'll see that um, the amount of rotations is directly correlated to how far the robot turns. So if we set this to one rotation, we already know that setting this to one rotation would cause the robot to take a 90 degree turn, but if we set this to two rotations, what type of turn do you think it would be? It would be an 180 degree turn, because we're setting the amount of rotations to two, as opposed to one. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically it. So, now we're going to talk about doing this in the move steering block. In my opinion, the move steering block is slightly more simplistic, but you can use whichever one suits you. I think move tank and move uh, steering both have their individual qualities. But basically, in move steering, and I alluded to this before, all you have to do is choose a value from negative 100 to positive 100, and choose wherever you want. So if you were to make a 90 degree turn, you would set this value to 50. And as you can see, the item, the icon right over here is kind of looks like a right turn. Um, and we know the value would be 50, because if we, set, if we set this to 100, which is the maximum value, it would make a complete U-turn. Um, but if we were to set this to 50, it would make half of a U-turn, which is 90 degrees. Um, and then obviously if you wanted to make a left turn, 
you would just set this value to negative 50. And as you can see, the icon over here shifts to a left turn with a right angle. The power, um, and I forgot to mention this before, but the power can be anything um, except zero, obviously. So if you were to make the power 100, uh, it would take a left turn, a left turn at a 90 degree angle with 100 power, meaning that it would turn very fast, but the angle would be the same. Um, usually if you want to minimize the error, you would keep this to a smaller value, like 25 or 50 or something, but you can always experiment. Um, and then, as usual, if we change the amount of rotations to 2 instead of 1, we take a 180 degree turn as opposed to a 90 degree turn. So that's how you do it with move steering. Now, we're going to be discussing doing an 180 degree turn. So as I mentioned before, um, the one way to do a 180 degree turn is you set one value to 0, set the other value to 50, and then you make it two rotations. However, this would take more time because one rotation, or a rotation can only go at a certain speed, uh, more or less. So this would take a longer time than simply turning um, one rotation, for instance, because it's two rotations as opposed to one rotation. But there's actually a way to, t to make a 180 degree turn with only one rotation. And the way you do this is you set one value to 50, or whatever it may be, 50, 75, 100, and then you set the other value to the negative of that value. So if my power left was 50, this means that my power right would be negative 50. And if you do this, you will see that your robot takes a 180 degree turn. And the reason why this works is because uh, one wheel in the robot is moving uh, forward, which is the left wheel, and while the left, meal, the left wheel moves forward, the right wheel moves backward. And this creates a motion so that the robot will essentially go in the opposite direction. And as usual, if you wanted to, you can always increase this power to 100, 100, 100, or whatever it may be. Um, and if you wanted to create a bigger angle, uh, you could do something like 75 and negative 50. Though for now, when we're doing, when we're, we're mostly going to be sticking to um, 90 degree and 180 degree turns. So for now, I'd suggest to, if you're ever going to do a 180 degree turn, just keep it at 50 and 50 and keep it for one rotation. So you'll actually notice if you keep this, or if you increase this to two rotations, for instance, in that case, it would do a 360 degree turn. So the robot would turn around all the way so that it ends up at the same location where it started. All right, and then just one last thing is going to be the move uh, steering block. So if you were to make an 180 degree turn, what do you guys think the value is going to be? So in this case, if you wanted to make an 180 degree turn using the move steering block, the value would have to be either 100 or negative 100. And as you can see here by the icon, I alluded to this before, but a 50, if a 50 um, steering equates to a 90 degree angle, that implies that a 100 steering would mean a 180 degree angle or a U-turn. And, and as a result, if you were to run this program, you'd see that the robot would do a U-turn. The thing with the move steering block is that it's not always going to be entirely accurate, uh, depending on what motor you're using because if a motor, or if your EV3 brick has slightly less batteries or something, um, in that case it's probably not going to make as good of a turn, whereas in other robots it'll make too big of a turn, um, and there are ways to deal with this, but uh, that'll come in a, in a later, uh, later lesson. So for now we're just going to be sticking with this, and if you want to make an 180 degree turn, 100, and that would be to the right side, the left side would be negative 100 for one rotation and the power can vary, you can make it whatever you want. So this is how you do a, or this is how you steer um, in LEGO EV3. So now I have a couple challenges for you guys. The first challenge is going to be to turn in a square. Um, so basically just make a square um, the best you can, and this should use implementation of either the move tank or the move steering blocks, and I'll give you some starter code uh, if you need some, or I'll give you some hints. 
So try this on your own, but basically you should make one square. And the hint will be that it should use a combination of moving forward and 90 degree turns. Alright, so I'm just going to uh, build the code over here. If you're confused, you can follow along. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a move tank block. And as I mentioned before, basically a square... How does a square look? We can just say a square looks like this, right over here. So, it's consisted, or it consists of four lines and four corners. So it'll go upward for one line, and then it'll turn, make a line again, turn, make a line again, and turn. So feel free to draw this out um, whenever you're making your program, if that makes any more sense. But basically what we have to do is we have to make our, our robot go forward, and I don't think one rotation is enough, so we'll put uh, maybe four rotations, just to make sure we get a nice big square. So we'll make this four rotations, 50 power, and as I mentioned before, the first thing, the first step should be making the robot go forward in a line. So we've accomplished that by doing this. Now we're going to want our robot to take a right turn. So you can use either the move tank block or the move steering block. In this case, if I wanted to do a right turn, I would have to make the power right zero, um, which means that the power left would be 50, and we'll keep that for run rotation. So we'll do that, and from there, we'll we have to make another line. So we'll put this move tank block, and then keep it 50, 50, 4. And we'll keep on doing this, so we have to repeat this code um, three more times. Because a square has four sides, and therefore we need to do this four times. Um, so go ahead and try that on your own, and see if you get a square. Alright, so our next challenge is going to be to build a circle. Alright, so this one is going to be slightly tougher. And I believe a lot of, a lot of people are going to think that uh, making a circle, or if you want to make a circle, uh, you can just make one of these values negative 50, and the other value 50, so that'll make it a 180 degree turn, and then just increase the amount of rotations to whatever you want, and this will kind of make a circle. The issue is that when you make an 180 degree turn, the ra the turn radius is zero, meaning that your, ra uh, your robot would essentially just be going around, um, kind of spinning. It wouldn't necessarily be making a circle. So if we really want to make a circle, we got to make sure that one value is bigger than the other, because um, this would make a, or this would give the circle an actual radius. Um, so if you don't understand, try out this program, and then try out my next program, and see what the difference is, and see which one creates an actual circle. So in this case, uh, if you want to, you can run this program, but basically what it'll do is it'll just keep on going around like this. But it won't really make a very big circle. So if we want to increase the size of the circle, or increase the radius of the circle, we're going to have to change one of these values. And in this case, I'm going to lower this value to maybe negative 25, and then I'll keep this at 10 rotations or whatever, however amount of rotations you want. And upon running this program, you'll see that the actual radius, and therefore the size of the circle, becomes bigger. And the way this works is that since one wheel is going at a slower power than the other wheel, um, it'll, uh, it'll essentially allow the right wheel to move kind of faster than the, the left wheel, and as a result that'll create a, uh, a more defined circle. Another thing you can do is just simply setting this to 0 and setting the other one to 50, and making it for however many rotations you want, and this would also give you a circle, and you'll notice that if you set this to ne negative 25, this circle is going to be smaller than if you were to set this to 0. And this is because negative 25 and 50 creates a smaller radius than 0 and 50. So that's basically how you would make a, a circle in EV3. And you can also do this with the move steering block, which I'd probably consider easier, but it's good to know both move tank and move steering. Um, and in this case, we can just make this whatever we want. Um, we'll say just around 50 for now. 
and we'll just increase the amount of rotations to whatever. And this will just make the robot go around and circle over and over and over and over. Um, so yeah, there's your program. Alright, so for one last challenge, what I want you guys to do is to try and make a triangle. Using whatever we learned in the past, um, using moving forward, moving forward and backward, turning at a 90 degree angle, turning at a 180 degree angle, and a lot of this is going to be trial and error, so try using it with both the move tank and the move steering box, and see how far you can get. Um, but with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.